be going live right now. Yeah, we're live right now. <laughs> um, oh, there we go. Uh, so hey, everyone, it's Justin here with uh, leftbridgerealestate.com. Uh, I have uh, Joel uh, with me here as well. Uh, Hi. Joel Cote is on our team. So we thought we'd just do a little uh, web podcast here because we're all kind of enjoying uh, our homes and we thought it'd be easy to get a lot of information out. Um, so Joel, how's it going? How are you feeling? Uh, things are going well. I mean, obviously things have slowed down a little bit, but uh, trying to remain positive and busy, um, getting lots of stuff done, both, I guess, professionally and personally around the house. So that, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I forgot to ask first, what kind of coffee did you bring? Um, I'm drinking espresso. This is my uh, third shot of espresso so far this morning. I tried to... Uh, I, I, I tried to save them. I'm usually done by nine o'clock, nine thirty, with my coffee, but uh, I need to be drinking coffee for this. So, I went uh, Folgers and made an entire uh, entire cup or pot this morning. So we're we're there. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So perfect. Pretty good. Um, so, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, I'm kind of in the same thing right now. I'm just trying to get like a a routine. Together because uh, it's crazy out there um, you know like we're just trying to figure out uh, what do we do every day with the kids what do we do for work what do we do professionally you know there's a lot of things so I'm first trying to get like okay still wake up at 6 30 get kids to breakfast and school do work in our office here and then uh, if you have to go out and some of our work because our our work's been deemed essential so um, you know, still got to go out every once in a while. And then uh, it's just like, come home, help the wife with naps, get the kids up and running again for the afternoon and then get ready for dinner. And then, you know, so it's, it's really hard because you're, you're juggling work with a kid activity and the work with a kid activity. And then uh, as soon as I put them to bed, then I try to get into like a regular adult theme, like eight o'clock, go for a run, 8.30, uh, go do this, you know, nine o'clock, do that. So I, I give myself like two hours of personal time per day. Yeah, it's something I've been thinking about a lot lately is how terrible this would be if you had kids. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I, I don't have kids, so I, I don't know how, uh, how, how exactly how much joy they bring to your life. But uh, um, it, it, it's nice to adults living in, an, in, a, in a house not having to worry about screaming kids, just a barking dog all the time. Yeah. Hopefully he stays quiet throughout this video. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that is, uh, we don't have to deal with that. Our dog has been barking more because more people are walking lately than they were. Oh, yeah. 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 And Nigel barks at the sign of wind. And I don't know if you can see, but that whole window is floor to ceiling. And he sits up there. And as soon as something walks by, he loses his mind. So that's, uh, that is crazy. Um, yeah. Because we're not, uh, we're not live anymore. James is saying that it kicked us off here. Let me see if I can fix that real quick. Um, Facebook Live, come on, Facebook work. Uh, hold on one sec. And if not, we'll have uh, we'll we'll have this recorded anyway, and we'll just uh, post it on Facebook afterwards. So if it doesn't want to go live, we'll just keep recording and and uh, post it later. Um, the other thing I was gonna ask you about is uh, like, how are you staying sane right now? <laughs> You're assuming I am. Um, it, you know, it, it's, it's tough, but I think, I think you, you kind of mentioned it is, is I think routine plays a, a big role in this. And I mean, routine plays a big role in my life outside of a pandemic as well. Um, I, I need routine to keep sane. So, and especially in our, in our industry, cause it's so easy to say like, oh, I don't have a meeting at eight o'clock this morning, or I don't have anything until noon. So I'm going to sleep in, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to watch a movie, play video games. In our industry, you can't, you can't really, I mean, you can do that. There's lots of people that do and they're successful at it. But me personally, I need, I need to have a schedule. I need to have a routine. And if I don't do it, I feel super guilty. So, um, 
routine plays a big part of, of staying sane. Uh, the other thing that we've incorporated into our house is no news after 5.30. Um, we turn the news off, no news at all. We'll check Facebook, everything like that. But like for the posts giving us updates and doom and gloom, we scroll right past it until the morning. Um, that kind of keeps us sane. Plus there's this really raunchy show on Slice that uh, that we're addicted to called Below Deck. So it's um, that keeps us sane. <laughs> <laughs> watching a bunch of 20 something good looking millennials work in a, in a yacht. Um, yeah. Drama ensues. It's fantastic. Everyone should check it out. A little crazy. Um, I can't bring myself to do it. And I missed out on Tiger King. Like I've watched intermittent enough that I know exactly what happened. My wife's watched enough of it. So she'd be watching it. I'd come in and watch 25, 30 minutes of it. And so I missed probably half it, but I get it. Um, they're insane. It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we're not through it yet. We're, um, we, we find the whole thing really crazy. So we watch like an episode every three days. So I think we have like two or three episodes left. Um, yeah, but there's so much TV to watch now. Like we have to catch up on better call Saul killing Eve is starting right away. Um, below deck, we have what nine seasons to go through, so there, there's a lot of stuff. And now that the weather's warming up, I can start getting outside again, finishing yeah. some projects in the garage, finishing off my deck, cleaning everything up. So when the weather does turn nice, we can still self self isolate, but at least self isolate in a in the outdoors a little bit. Yeah, in a manner where you're allowed to still be a human. Um, I've noticed this pasty skin. Yeah, yeah. Well, last thing I, I noticed before, we'll, we'll talk about real estate here, but um, even when we're walking, like we live across from McMaster, we, we walk with people and people will like jump to the other side of the path and they are fully avoiding you, which I'm like, totally fine with. I mean, whatever. We've, we've got little kids that are running. So it's like, stay away from us and people just avoid us like the plague. So it's kind of nice to go for a walk. Now. We don't have to have small talk out there. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's great. Especially if you're, uh, if you're an introvert, like myself and, and a little bit of you too, Justin, it's, it's, um, it's really nice not having to, uh, talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Other people. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it says we're still having technical difficulties on, uh, it says we're live on Facebook, but, uh, our game show says we are not live. So whatever, we'll just call this and, uh, I'll, uh, we'll, I trust technology. Yeah. We'll just upload the recording later. Um, why would it want to work on the first try? Um, so I guess in the real estate world, like what are you doing to keep people, um, safe from showings and, and, or from when they have their house listed? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, first and foremost, obviously if like, I, I like to, or I tend to focus a little bit more on, on, um, on vacant homes cause they're a little bit easier to, sh to show. Um, so for vacant homes, it's easy. Uh, there's, there's fewer people living, well, there's nobody living in it and fewer people going through it. But uh, I guess regardless of whether it's vacant or whether it's owner occupied or tenant occupied, even for that matter, um, you know, I, I have a box of gloves in my car, uh, little rubber purple gloves um, that I, I, I'll give to my clients if they want them. Most people will take them. Uh, also some wet wipes and wet naps, some alcohol wipes to just wash everything down and also just, you know, let people know like, yeah, go through the house, but try not to touch anything, even though you're wearing gloves, everything like that. Um, I, there's also, before going out and showing, because I pre predominantly work with uh, with buyers versus sellers. So uh, I'll ask, you know, the basic questions. Are you showing any symptoms? Are you this? Are you that? So, um, and as long as all those things check out, then yeah, absolutely. Let's go out there and look at some houses. Because right now, with, with everything that's happening, it is actually a really good time to buy still. Uh, that may sound a little insensitive but from a straight straight up financial standpoint if you're in if, if you're able to do it now's a good time to do it so um we still have a lot of people out there looking yeah. which is nice to see I, I noticed on like we have i think 50 clients houses listed still and people are like hey let's just list it and we're fine if you want to list it because the the job is right now is to build a pipeline of like people who want to buy when this is over and um I've heard a lot of people saying like, oh, don't, don't bother listing your home. Well, you're not going to be in that pipeline if you're not listed. Right. And, and we have sold a few, um, 
houses that are occupied, but you are right. Like uh, four right now that we have offers on are all vacant. So it's, it's pretty funny to see like the, yeah, four houses we have vacant all have offers on them. And I think maybe the public is just more mentally like, yeah, let's go to the vacant ones for now and see. Um, but like systems like this with zoom and Facebook live and all that, like you can show a house to someone, um, on the internet first, like go over the pictures of them room by room. And we'll, we'll do that in the, the game, uh, next year. But, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. It seems like it's fine. And, um, they, you, you know, I've had a few sellers where they're like, God, you know, no more showings. And what we're doing is we're still collecting leads and we're still, you know, generating, you know, interest in the house, but we're just waiting until um, they're ready to show. And, and it's mostly clients who are more at risk, like uh, older clients. You know, so, yeah. And then you hit on, you hit on a, a couple points there that I, I maybe I'll expand on a little bit. Um, one thing to keep in mind, I think if you're, if you're thinking about selling your house, um, I mean, it's, it's obvious and I, I won't, I won't pretend that this isn't reality. Like our market has slowed down, but if you're thinking about selling your house, you can't really look at the numbers and think that that's actual reality. I mean, it is, but the one thing that it doesn't tell you is that out of all of the listings that you're competing with, how many of those listings aren't actually accepting showings right now because of this pandemic. So there's a lot of, so what I'm saying is that even though you may have, let's say, 20 houses that you're competing with to sell against how many of those 20 aren't allowing showing so you're not competing against 20 you you, you may be competing against 12 or or 10 i mean i don't, I don't know statistically what the amount of uh, people not allowing showings are but it's significantly less than what the numbers are actually showing you um so i think that's a positive thing um the other thing I was going to point on when you said technology, I mean, even prior to this pandemic happening, I, I have some clients on the other side of the country that, you know, can't come here to go and look at houses. And I, I've shown them a few houses just with, you know, FaceTime or, or uh, Facebook video, whatever, walk through the house. I can answer questions. I can, you know, if they want to see something specifically, like how big is the pantry? Well, here's the camera I can show you. Yeah. Um, you know, and help narrow things down from there. So we were we, we were pretty much other than the cleaning precautions and the, the, the qualifying questions, <laughs> um, we were pretty much all doing this anyway, you know, yeah. uh, so. Um, I thought I'd, I'd pull this up because you, you mentioned it. So uh, I thought it was like 30% of homes were vacant, um, but I think it's more than that. So there's 802 listings right now, 354. So it's like 40 some odd, 42%, 43% of homes in Lethbridge are vacant. So there's still a good number of homes that you can go in and pick up right now. You don't have to be like super worried about that, right? So absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's kind of nice to see. Um yeah, I was I was talking to I can't remember who I was talking to, someone in the US about how does this compare to like 2008? Because everyone's like, oh well are, is my house price going to drop 10%, 20%? And I think when you look at the crash that happened 10 or 12 years ago, um, I think that was more about like inflated numbers, really unscrupulous banking uh, situations where they purposely inflated houses um, so people could buy uh, depreciating assets like a car or a boat. And so there's all this weird value built into the homes that was never really there. Like it never had a steady growth. It went from being this straight line to, oh, this is what my house is worth, but there was no reason. And in Southern Alberta, that didn't hit us as hard, right? Like Lethbridge was kind of like there and dipped and we're back above those numbers. So I talked to someone yesterday, one of my friends, and he's like, oh, well, I wouldn't want to sell my home and lose 10%. And I, I thought, you know, you might lose money, you know, today. If you were desperate and you had to sell today, someone might come in and lowball you because what's, why not, right? If you're a buyer's agent, you would be like, hey, we might as well try low and you might not get the deal, but whatever. Um, but I think as soon as this Corona goes away, our numbers will just rebound. Like there won't be this stay down in the dip because there's no real reason that we would lose value. Um, you know, this is a, a worldwide thing. This isn't a local thing here. So uh, as soon as everyone gets their jobs back, which we're all hoping is soon, then, you know, three months later, the market should just be back to where it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're, you're partially, I, I think you're right. Um, I shouldn't have said partially. But I, I do, <laughs> I do think you're right. Uh, however, the the one thing I think that we need to be keep in mind is I I, I can't see, and I, I'm I'm a real estate agent. I'm not a doctor or anything like that. But um, 
I can't see like wh- when this is all over, it's going to come. Our, we're going to get back to normal because who knows what that normal is actually going to look like, but it's not going to be like, wake up one day and do it. it, it we're we're going to have like, you know, it, our, our society will kind of like systematically open, uh, you know, one after the other. So I, I think even though once we flatten everything out, there's still going to be a little bit of a hill to climb. Um, so, but I, I still think what you said is going to happen is going to happen most likely. Like there, obviously we're in a little bit of a dip, but when we come through the other side and everything opens back up and we get back to normal, um, you know, th- things are going to rebound very quickly. Yeah. In in fact, th- we may see a little bit of a boom because there's, there's a ton of people out there that just aren't comfortable looking at houses right now but they're ready willing pre-qualified to buy it's just a matter of getting out there and trying to find it like um on our back system matrix we when we set you up for a matrix campaign so getting emails of which houses criteria everything like that seeing that i still have a ton of people favoriting looking uh, entering possibilities, taking away stuff. So people are out there looking, shopping online, even though they may not be shopping in person. So once this is all over and that confidence comes back up, we may see a flood of buyers just wanting to buy. Yeah. Well, this is a graph. Take advantage I sh- of the low price. Sorry. Yeah. No, this is good. This is a graph I shared the other day. This is kind of like week one. So January one to eight and eight to 15 and all the way across to last week. Right. And so January, February, this is uh, kind of our regular timeline here. And then you can see as you get, you know, up into the spring market, we had a good boom happening. And then the numbers have dipped a little bit. And, and I think you're right. I think those people were qualified. And we've had a lot of people say, hey, I'm just going to pause. I, I, I can still afford it. I can still get a mortgage on it. But I'm, I'm going to take a break. And I think this, this number should be 40, 50 up here for these weeks that we're I think those people will just pause. And then when we get to June, July, if this is gone, then those people will just be like, all right, get out. And there'll be quick possessions too, because people will want to take advantage of, hey, what's happening in the market. They want to make like, you know, sure that they can move in the warm times, right? So they're going to try to buy as fast as they can. There's going to be quick possessions. Quick possessions will result in more purchases. That'll result in fast possessions on that side too. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be an interesting time. Yeah, uh, I was actually thinking about that a little bit more this morning too. Like, I think there's going to be an. I mean, who knows when this is going to be? I don't think there's anybody out there that can tell you. But I could, I can kind of see a little bit of almost a bubble of of taking advantage of of some lower prices because things have been sitting and people weren't buying. Sellers maybe. Uh, motivated to sell so you could take advantage of that take advantage of really low interest rates take advantage of ba- basically everything until things go back to normal so there's going to be a little bubble there and, and who knows when that right time is going to be to buy but the people who either luck out or have a theory and were right are, are going to benefit pretty pretty good from from all of this so uh, it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out once we forget like the human tragedy side of it, <laughs> this whole situation is, is, is extremely fascinating yeah. just to see how it plays out because no one, no one can predict what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, we all have our thoughts and opinions on it and we're probably all wrong. I, um, I, yeah, I'm tired of the opinion part because uh, opinions do not matter right now. Like you have no clue. Um, we talk about H1N1 and, and, uh, SARS and MERS and and those were different and yeah okay they're different and so then the world is also 10 years further ahead than it was 10 years ago and and maybe we're we're realizing that human life isn't worth the economy and maybe the economy isn't worth human life and I don't know and it's hard to tell where people are going so would would give you a well this many lives is worth it and this many isn't I how could they possibly know that and and if this all goes away and we ended up a lot of people not dying and, and not getting sick cool. And if nothing would have happened anyway, cool, but whatever, like the whole world is paused. And I think there's a lot of anguish of like feeling like you're falling behind, but you have to realize that everyone is also falling behind right now. And, and uh, you, especially with us with like kids, you, you panic like, Oh, they're not in school. Nah, no kid is in school. So, you know, you're, if you're, you're worried about that, don't be right now. Just, just enjoy it. We'll call it a day. Even when I was in school, I never went to school and look at me now. No, don't follow my path. You're in a house. <laughs> um, 
So Jay, uh, our, um, our uh, talk show host here, he uh, set us up with something a little fun. So we're going to do a, uh, a price this house game. So uh, talk show host is going to tell us a little bit about the properties. I'm going to pull up uh, Hawaii here first. Let me just get it. Hawaii? Yeah, we're going to do Hawaii. A it's the best place to live. Yeah. I'll bet. I've never even been to Hawaii, let alone seen their real estate market. Well, I Me either, but I've seen pictures. It looks fantastic. <laughs> I've been ahead of the game. I was in Hawaii uh, last year. So, I mean, obviously, I'll know exactly what's happening. So, uh, the game, Joel, is you're going to predict. I'm going to go through the, um, the uh, photos. You're going to predict your price. I'm going to write down my price, and we'll see how close you are. Uh, and uh, can you give us a little description of it there? I'm going to tell you all about 20 Kai Ala Drive in Lahaina, Hawaii. This is an amazing property featuring eight full bedrooms, nine and a half bathrooms, and it comes in at 11,076 square feet, which is lots of space to keep yourself socially distanced from basically anybody you can think of. Now this place is located on one acre of land and both stunning views of the ocean. You can see beautiful Hawaiian sunsets and you can watch the whales while that's in season as well. Again, it's over 11,000 square feet. So you can fit up to 16 people comfortably in this home where they'd never have to bother each other. Now, as you look through these photos, you can see it's a very well taken care of property. It's actually designed to bring people in who are vacationing so they can all enjoy the house together. Again, enough room for 16 people so you can bring an entire wedding party and just hang out at this house and enjoy the beautiful Hawaiian scenery. Joel, you're looking at these pictures right now. What do you think right now about this house? Tell me. What do I think about the house? Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> I love the 24 by 24 tile, although I hate the fact that it's slate. Um, I don't really care for the colors. I'm just picking all the negatives out, but it's, it looks like a beautiful house on a beautiful property. It's probably somewhere I wouldn't mind spending my time if I had a couple million dollars to refurnish and Wait. decorate. Look at this. This wall looks like it opens up. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You can see the sliding place for the doors up top there. What? Uh, what I beautiful. Do you know what island it's on? I, Lahaina, Hawaii is all I know. I know nothing about Hawaii. So. <laughs> okay. Because there's lots of islands, right? So if you're on Maui, it's a little more touristy. If you're on Kona, it's a little bit more uh, the locals and, and guys with money there. So hmm, depends on which island. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty sweet. It's got great views. Um, you said it's on an acre. And it is in Maui, Hawaii. Maui, okay. Maui. That explains why it's kind of set up as a, like an Airbnb setup, eh? Um, if you look mm -hmm. at the photos, you can see everything's like a pullout bed. Um, there, you know, there's, uh, where was the bed here? Hold on. Oh, nice. I like yeah. those built-ins. Yeah. Like the whole thing is kind of, it's got like, yeah, like, like a flat. Oh, the fridge over here is all built in too. Nice. Yeah. What was I looking at? Oh, pool table, a rooftop deck. Yeah. See all the bedrooms are set up kind of like uh, an Airbnb. So I'm guessing that's what it's used for, but maybe someone's tired of having it right now. Now I'll tell you, I was in Maui a few years ago and I looked at real estate there because why not when you're in Maui, you do that. And um, I remember like one bedroom condos were selling for $150,000 to $250,000, two bedroom ones right in that range. So um, 11,000 acres um, or 11,000 uh, uh, square foot, one acre with this view. I think I got a price in mind. Um, I have my price written down. Okay. I, will, uh, I will go first then. I'll go with this view. Uh, I'm going to say $11.9 Justin with 11.9 million. Are we oh, playing uh, Price is Right rules here? No, no Price is Right rules. I hate Price is Right rules. This is uh, whoever's closer, up or down. Okay. Right. Joel, so you came in at 11.9? Yeah. I came in at 14.7. I thought I was crazy. Okay. Tell us. You are both way undercutting the property value on this home. I can tell you that the mortgage per month would cost more than double what I make in a calendar year. It's about $98,000 per month for the mortgage and a total sale price currently listed at $24.5 million. Ah, that's a joke. You know what? 
honestly, my second guess was 23.9, but I was like, there's no way I should have one guess at 14 and then another one at 23. It's just too, I'm just grasping at straws. So Dang, I thought, yeah, that's awesome. Um, not, wow. uh, not the investment property we were looking for. Um, Dang, now I'm, I'm mad at myself. Okay, Joel's up one nothing. Um, I have redemption here. We're gonna shift to a uh, an LA property. Let me just pull that one up real quick here. Uh, where'd you go, LA property? Oh, you're still Hawaii. There we go, LA. Okay, can you guys see that one? Yeah, you can and it's beautiful. Okay, How is it ever? I'll go through the photos. You give us a description. This is the Owlwood Estate. Uh, the Owlwood Estate is located at 141 South Carrollwood Drive in Los Angeles, California. A little bit bigger than the last one, coming in at nine bedrooms with 10 bathrooms, and it sits at over 12,200 square feet. Wow. Oh my gosh, it has a tennis court and a pool. Yes, it was designed in 1936 really by a renowned architect, Robert D. Farquhar. Uh, it's got three contiguous lots in the homey hills in LA. So this is a built on massive amounts of land. It's so about 10, 10 acres worth of land it's sitting on. If I'm not mistaken, Farquhar is the- um, The guy from Shrek. Shrek, yeah, okay. So this guy, that's who built this house, okay. Yes, <laughs> the, the, the villain from Shrek. Yeah, no, you can see his design features in it with uh, this little picture. <laughs> wow, this is- uh, this is a tough one. So how many acres was it? Sorry. It was on 10 acres of property. Okay. It has its own guest home as well as the main home that you're looking through right now. Look at this. I don't know why it says rendering. Maybe these aren't real. Maybe these are all fake photos now. Can do with it. So the property's not done yet. So I wonder if the developer is going to do this for you. Um, did it say on there if it's fully done or if they're just planning on doing it? it it is fully done. I just think that these renderings are based on pictures of the home and more of a model rather than actual in stock photos. So, so Jeff Bezos would have to buy this place and do a renovation to it. Yes, essentially. Yeah, I was looking for it there. So Jeff Bezos would be able to buy it. Um, so this is, this is fully renovated? Like as it seems on the, or, or, or is it priced as it is in the pictures? It, or it would is be it priced like, as if it is a fully this is a fully developed property and it's priced to match that. Okay. So, the developer will do that. Okay. Uh, I went first last time. I'm, uh, I'm going to defer to you, Joel. Okay. I wrote this down again. Um, I might be extremely high because I have no clue. 900. Okay. Dang it. I thought I was being in the crazy person. Well, I figured um, the game shows would go crazy for this and they would pick like insane numbers. Um, but I feel like it's tough to say. I know that a regular place in LA could be just five million dollars and it doesn't have to be that nice. This is like three buildings, uh, 11 acres of prime real estate. Um, I was just a little bit below you. I went 54 million, 800,000. Joel, what did you say again? 63.9? Yes. Joel's two and oh, as he is way closer to the actual property value of $115 million. <laughs> <laughs> okay well i, didn't I, I think we both actually lost this game because we, <laughs> we were significantly off on all of them how much fun would they be if we offered them 54 million dollars if you guys combine your two offers then you might have a chance of getting this home okay. maybe yeah yeah that's uh that's rude of them to be uh that awesome um <laughs> okay so we 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 suck at that that's fine um yeah. I was going to do something else. We had a, uh, a client ask us about a house that they have in um, Copperwood and they didn't want their address shown. So I was going to do a, a quick CMA here to show you, okay, I don't know how to price an LA home or a Hawaii home apparently, but um, someone just sent us a detail on uh, what Copperwood home would go for. So this is really simple. They have a uh, 2000 square foot, two story home, no basement landscape. So um, when you're in Copperwood, that's a, that's a real simple one. Um, to, for us to, to do the, the pricing on. So single family detached West, it has a, uh, it's a two story, right? Um, double attached garage, I'll go with garage attached. And uh, well, we could go square footage here because there's a bunch of 1700 ones. So what do you figure, we'll go 1800 to 2200? Yeah. 
I think that's. You can see my uh, matrix right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, so that's a pretty good range because there's a bunch of, you know, 24, 2500 square foot ones in Copperwood and all the West Side, right? So when you say Copperwood, we are talking about like 2010 and up built homes uh, on the West Side, essentially. And then you exclude Paradise and Riverstone and you get a pretty good mix on that. Um, so we have 28 matches that are on the market. So if you're going to list your home right now, you don't ever want to see 28 that you're up against because that's a ton of competition. You want one or two because then it's, you know, people will look at all three. But anyway, um, and then if people sold over the last year, it's going to skyrocket. Yeah, so there's a ton. There was, what, 52 sales then, right? Um, so we don't even need to go back that far. If we go six months, let's say, 55, that's a ton, but it'll give us a good spread of what things have been selling for in the last six months. So if we pretend there's no pandemic right now, this is kind of how we would look at a home. Let's just look at the summaries. So these are homes that are currently listed. So we would kind of go, okay, well, what are they asking here? And here's a, um, you know, a brand new build, 1800 square foot. So no fence, no landscaping, 345s. These are way down in price. Hey, do I? Hardly ever. That's wow. Um, it's a nice place. Yeah. So, uh, hey, maybe it's time to buy a brand new place. Um, what if we do this? Well, you're going to be competing against new, so that's fine. Oh, that's what I want to do. I want to map it out. Just let me change the map real quick because um, we do want to avoid some areas. So if we just, I mean, you can see most of them are actually in Copperwood. So let's just do uh, Copperwood essentially for now. And we do the crossings too. Okay. Uh, so there we go. So you have a nice one on, on miners, 2,000 square foot, no basement developed, 399.9. Um, this is a brand new build as well. So that gives you a good, oh, nice fridge in there. Hey, that looks like your fridge, Joel. It is. Well, I, I, I got the different handles. There's, there's my bridge. Back and see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so there you go. So that's the lowest price one. So if you're saying, okay, this is where I'm at, 2,000 square foot, three beds and landscaped, um, our client would have the full fence instead of this. They'll have no fencing back there. So they have the front landscaping. Um, that's not going to add a ton of monetary value. That'll add scalability, right? Like Can you click on that? Sorry, is that a Golco? Leftover Golco? Yeah. Oh, it is okay. Yeah, yeah, brand new Galco. Um, so they must have done landscaping, right? Galco's using that fridge. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's nice to see. I mean, I really like that. Idea. Like once our fridge crafts. Oh, out, I do too. It's, it's they're they're fantastic. I I really like them, but yeah, it was always uh, Ashcroft using those fridges for the longest time. So it's interesting that Galco's using it now too. Well, what has been using it, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. nice. The brand new one. Uh, this has the fridge. This is another Galco as well. So, so now you do such a good job of their design and, and uh, interior Galco. Sorry, we're getting off topic. No, that's fine. So 400, 400. So if, if I were to list a home, I'd be like, well, those are your two lowest comps. Um, and then it starts to go up from there, right? So then you got to look at, okay, well, where do we fit in on, on uh, style, finishing, everything like that. So again, if you're competing against brand new, brand new will typically get a higher price. I mean, that's just how it goes, right? But, um, you know, you're competing in a bit of resale. Maybe you're, you're, this one's fully developed, 2,058 square foot, big garage for 450. So if you fully developed, can you get 450? Eh, sometimes. Um, I'm going to go down to some of the solds because this is a good indicator of, okay, uh, who you're up against right now matters. Like that's who we're fighting against. Here's one that sold 1,800 square foot, a little smaller uh, for 365. Um, we had one on Moonlight, sold for 367, fully developed. Uh, one on Firelight, sold for 405. It's a little bit bigger with four beds up instead of three. That was a good deal on that house, though. I think 108. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, if I were just to look at stats, I'd be like, okay, well, it looks like your your range is going to be that 399 to 420 range. And if you look at the actual sold status, um, the average has been 432. So. Not too bad. Now this will this will factor in a few that. Let me just go back here and see some of the higher end ones that sold. Um, fully developed for five hundred, right? And that backs onto the park. Um, fully developed for four six five, back onto the park. So we're not backing onto the park. Uh, we're not backing onto the pond. Like I think that one was as well. Um, mm -hmm. This one onto the school. So your location is going to matter a little bit. Um, so yeah, I would say yeah. When you look at these ones, fully developed for four and a quarter. Fully developed for four and a quarter. Um, not going well for 400, so we're going to be in this range. We're going to be at 400 to 4, 15, 20 range. So, um, that's kind of the same. 
Go I ahead, think that one of Tyler's there, uh, that it, it was backing onto the park. Um, it was uh, Ben's, Daytona Ben's, that one from 408. I think that was backing onto the park and that had a basement development. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's a really smoking deal actually there then. Yeah. And that's a Ben's, right, you said? Yeah. I believe so, yeah. It has the, um, the uh, oh, where'd it go? Has the um, office right at the front door there. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a good deal. It was a really nice house. Uh, I think it was priced to sell. Um, it, yeah. it, it sold fairly well. I think once they got the price corrected, it sold yeah. like 27 days. So once they listed it like this, then it's a smoking deal. So yeah. well, that does skew the number. I was bit. selling those back in the day for like 425 oh, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. Oh, Not okay. fully developed, so... Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of interesting to see what they've been going for, but um, this one fully developed for four and a quarter. This one's more along the, the lot um, area um, where there's not, I don't think this one, oh, it always goes, you got to skip through these. Hold on. Everyone's don't get dizzy. I just want to check out the backyard. Um, yeah. Just a standard lot over here. And that one sold for four and a quarter fully developed. So it does hurt the, the value a little bit, but yeah, I think that's, Pretty fair. So let's say we go into that house and we do an evaluation. You know, we're going to do the same numbers on this and go, okay, well, your low end is three ninety nine nine. That's who you're competing with, and your high end seems to be about the four one range. And then you have to have your base developed. And that, that seems like everyone that went over that. Well, this one went for four thirty five after it was for four hundred. So you know they likely did basement development because the price went up, right? And that's a brand new home. So, um, yeah. yeah. And then this one, I sold this one a few years ago. And it backed onto the school. It's fully developed, 2,100 square foot with a bonus room and filled for 430. So I think, you know, you're, if the clients are going to want more than that, um, develop your basement. But uh, if you want to stay in a lower price bracket, that's probably the better way to go. Um, what do you think? The thing with developing a basement too is like, I mean, we've seen evidence in the past, like we had one house in Copperwood, it, the, they developed their basement themselves. I don't know if you remember this. They developed the basement themselves and it was super choppy drywall work wasn't really well done and so they pumped some money into the basement doing it themselves thinking they could increase the value of their house and and what ended up happening is they basically developed their basement for nothing because the house sat and sat and sat because he had so much so many competitors that people just uh any any work that was done wasn't done properly so it devalued the house yeah so if you're if you if you are basement to get a higher price you need to know what you're doing or hire it out for sure to to make that make sense oh yeah i agree um, uh, our game show host is going to bail on us so goodbye okay bye we'll help. bye bye thank you um yeah i, I always tell people it's kind of like uh you hear the, the saying nimby like not in my backyard and that pertains to um uh, other things like I don't want a commercial development right so that's not I always tell people it's like not in my basement and if you're going to develop a basement you got to make sure it is the best floor plan you can or you have wicked upgrades in it because um, you're going to develop a basement and you're going to put one bedroom and someone's going to go I want two bedrooms and you're going to put zero bedrooms and they're going to say they want one or you're going to put two and they want a big living room and you're never going to know so you know um, on any resale thing lower price is better that's obvious um, less work for you if you don't if, if you didn't need like if you develop the basement to enjoy it for 10 years cool and then you sell it fine but if it's vacant and you're like a month away from selling it i wouldn't bother putting money into it typically that's what i typically would say so i don't know that's that's how i usually talk to a client about it and i know that this person will ask that kind of question too it's like hey should we develop it mm, nah, no <laughs> i wouldn't um you're talking about it's going to cost even if you did it yourself 10 to fifteen thousand, right if you do it proper um and I might be able to get you twenty thousand dollars, and I might not, right? And and that's the, the hard thing. So um, yeah, yeah, all that all that work to potentially make an extra couple grand, mm. and you haven't paid yourself. It, it's a break even standpoint, so you might as well. And and it's a gamble, so you might as well just not not do it unless you absolutely need it and you're gonna enjoy it. Yeah, and especially in this market when when there was twenty eight available and you could stay at the lower tier, I would stay at the lower tier. I wouldn't want to be in the middle tier because that's right. And then they're going to opt for the lower prices right now. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. So that's it. So we sucked at uh, Hawaii and we were terrible at LA. Uh, maybe next time we'll, we'll have them pick some 
more normal numbers that we, we might be able to hit. Um, <laughs> so do you have anything else before we wrapped up that you want to chat about? Predictions on the pandemic? Um, I, I have opinions. Anybody who knows me or has ever talked to me for a lengthy period of time knows that I'm full of opinions. And um, yeah, I have opinions and predictions. Uh, I just think they're wrong. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I just hope we, we get it all through this. The, the one thing I thought was super cool yesterday, it just uh, like with all of the doom and gloom, I, I try to do my best to, to, to try to pick out little uh, silver linings in the clouds uh, as much as I can. And yesterday with that whole uh, curb, I think it's curb uh, that came out, you know, on Facebook and Twitter and social media for the limited amount that I understand how to use that stuff. There was a bunch of people like, oh, I got paid twice. How do I pay this back? Who do I contact the government to pay back, you know, the, the money? I'm like, you know, that, that's such a typical Canadian thing to do that's a little heartwarming, actually. You know, like we have the, a lot of the population in Canada suffering financially or are going to be suffering financially from this pandemic. And, and um, you know, we, we get paid twice from the evil government and people are like, how do I pay this back? I just think that's super cool. You know, if that would have happened in the States, it would have been like, screw you government, you take this from my cold dead hands. And up in Canada, we're like, no, no, you overpaid us. Let's, let's pay you back. Yeah. I just think that's really, really endearing. Um, so yeah, that, that's one cool note that I, that I thought that wasn't answering any of your questions. I answered my own. Prediction of, uh, are we going to be okay through this? And it seems like uh, most of us will be. Um, we understand it's a crappy time and you can still be a good person in a crappy time. Yeah, I, I think I think if that's if that's one lesson we as a society can learn throughout this pandemic is that uh, maybe the one thing that we forgot prior to is that we are all in this together. I mean, there's really no selfish. There's no room for selfishness in this in in our in our new world. Like everyone is in this together. We're all suffering the same. Um, we all have our own struggles, and and um, I think this has shown people that that's true. Yeah. You know, instead of it being a me, me, me society, I actually wrote like in my spare time, this might sound stupid, but I write things. <laughs> no one will ever read my writings, but I write a lot. And uh, I wrote like three pages on, on, on that exact topic is just like, you know, how is this, how do I see this changing us already? And we're only a, what, four weeks into this and we may, we very well may have, four more months of this you know like the small changes that we're seeing is going to be compounded at the end of it and I think I think in the end we will all get through this together stronger and I think we'll we'll have a better society because of it so uh, that's something I'm hopeful for and if that's if that's I don't know if that's more so a prediction than a uh, uh, a thought of utopia I don't if that makes sense yeah, no, I think that's that's a good way to look at it right now. Is it's it's easy to get down on things, and uh, but um, yeah, it's a nice nice way to go out. I would say that it's uh, it's okay to feel uh, stressed and anxious, but um, it's uh, it's nice to still be good humans and and move on. And I guess in a few months, if that's how long it takes, we'll get out. I saw they released Wuhan the other day, and um, people were cheering in the streets and excited. So um, you know, everything will end. We're just on the back end of it right so yeah. yeah yeah i mean we'll all get through it uh and yeah i mean it's just kind of nice to i know at night we were on expedia or trip advisor and it's like hey where should we plan our next beach vacation once we can actually leave the country and feel yeah. e everything's back open uh, yeah there, there's lots of lots of hopefulness that you can focus on it's not all doom and gloom so yeah Oh, I agree. I agree. Okay. Well, that, it's a good way to wrap that up. Um, I appreciate uh, the chat today. Uh, again, we had a little bit of technical difficulty, so we'll uh, try to post this on uh, Facebook and YouTube and all those other pages so people can watch it and listen. Uh, and we'll make a, a recording of it as well so they can uh, take it out. And I'll, I'll post, post a link to those photos and the MLSs of those uh, ridiculous properties that our game show host picked. So uh, thanks, Joel, for being with us, and uh, we'll chat with you soon. Thanks, Justin. Talk to you later. See ya.